sitting here today with Robert Epstein from England, um, who founded the Soul Men organization. Can you please tell us what do you actually do as Soul Men? Okay. Apart from uh, trying to support some other organizations like, uh, for example, the Bali Children's Project, Soul Men are now primarily focusing on cases of individual suffering. So we try and find cases of individual suffering and solve those situations as quickly as we can. Can you give us some examples of the success that you've had so far? I think the latest challenge that we had is probably a good example. Uh, we found uh, 29 people living in a house of one and a half ara uh, with one toilet. 29 people with one toilet living in a very small house in Denpasar, in the centre of Denpasar. And uh, there were 10 families. Two of the families uh, intermarried and seven out of their children had uh, severe disabilities like scoliosis, yeah. spine twists and quite some horrible disfiguration. Yeah. The health department in Bali gave up on them two years ago. They visited the house and they said that there's nothing we can do, very sorry. And we really don't believe that that's uh, acceptable. Mm -hmm. And we moved in and we have therapists there three days a week and one of the weekends. We sent in uh, doctors and then another doctor, volunteer doctor, to, to, to reassess. And we've had all the five boys who are seriously disabled measured up for customized wheelchairs. So that once we managed to move them out of the house, <coughs> where there's no room for the wheelchairs, um, they'll be able to have a life and see life other than from the perspective at the moment is from not lying on the concrete floor. Um, Robert, you, you sound very passionate. Is that what drives you? No, the events are. The car drives me. Ah! Given by Peter Thomas. How lovely. Yes. That must have made your life much easier. Well, it was very useful, yes. Now, what drives me is the joy of seeing faces on kids uh, after they, we've managed to change their lives. Sort of abject misery, like going into this particular house, when we first went, it was like going into a morgue. Mm. When we go in now, it, it's like going into a sort of happy playground. Mm -hmm. The therapists have put toys in. We put toys in there from our great supporters, and the therapists have put um, playthings in there. And that really is the most wonderful joy that drives me. I'm sure it is. How do you actually raise the money? And what do you spend the money on? The last fundraising event we had was at the Hard Rock Hotel in Kuta, where we had two nights of rock music. The first night headed up by a band called Navicula, a very popular band in Bali, and the last night was headed up by Superman is Dead, who have 4.2 million fans in Indonesia. And, and we what? raised 312 million rupiah, which is about $33,000. And that was through ticket sales, through sales of our t-shirts, through raffle, auction, and um, private donation. Great. I bet you get you got some good PR for that. Oh, I think you asked me, what do we spend it on? I'm sorry, yes, I did. The money that we spent that on was to secure some land for 10 years, only a few minutes' walk from where they live, so that we can build two houses and the therapist can actually have a workable area. At the moment, it's impossible. The, 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 the stench and the conditions at the current house are, are too, too difficult for them to work on. And also, we need a wheelchair-friendly place. And yes. um, why is PR so important to sell them? PR is very important to uh, give us credibility, mm -hmm. basically. We, the, the foundation started off for the first two years um, trying to build the brand. We did a series of walks, barefoot walks around Bali, doing medical health checks and presentations in schools, orphanages and villages. And we had four TV companies and two film companies. We've got 22 films up on YouTube. We've had four front covers of the Jakarta Post, uh, two full pages in the Bali Daily, um, an interview on, on ITN National News in, in in England and with that we managed to gain credibility and an awful lot of friends and that really
really helps. Um, I hear that <coughs> your new friend, Governor Pastica, was reported as saying Bali is a very lucky is very lucky to have the mad man of Bali. What does that mean? And I does think that it, make you happy? I think it's kind of a backhanded compliment. <gasps> he he was talking about um, he was talking about uh, going to Grogyak up on the north coast on the road to Yilimanok. And I said, oh yes, I, I walk there barefoot <laughs> during our first walk. And that's when he, get, he, he said that. But it's a very nice thing to say that mm -hmm. Bali is very lucky to have that, such a madman. And that, it's, it's a nice, nice comment, I think. How could someone from Bali help so man? Somebody from Bali can uh, look on our website or our Facebook and see our wish list of short, medium and long term needs and either pick out items from the list and let us have those as a list of drop-off points around the island, or send us money, funding, so that we can buy them. Right. Um, and how do you think the people from the other part of the world would be able to help them so now? I think people from outside of Bali would be enormously helpful if they could join us on our, on our new project, and that's the gift of hearing. Uh, where we collect hearing aids from around the world and refurbish them in Bali and then go out and find kids who have never heard their mother's voice and we give them a hearing aid. Now how they can do that is to contact their local hospitals, their local hearing aid centres, uh, their doctors or just put an advert in the local paper and say, please send me the hearing aid. People normally throw these hearing aids away when the person dies or they change it or whatever, and they can be very expensive. Mm -hmm. We recently um, found a little girl who's three years old, never heard, therefore couldn't speak, never heard a mother's voice, mm -hmm. and we managed to get her ears tested, a calibrated hearing aid, and she heard for the first time. Wonderful. I think one of the things that is very apparent is that you get things done very quickly. There's nobody here to ask, can we do this, can we do that? It's done. It's organised by you guys, of which there are only... Well, there's two of us in the field. There's myself and Sarah Chapman. Yeah. We've got Lee Stokes, who's doing marketing and, and PR for us. We've got a backroom of Gemma and Tanya Coles, who uh, do our accounts, so that we're quite transparent. But those are going up on the website shortly. We have Mankumadi Ariawan, our, our president. Mm -hmm. And we have Lucky, who is our translator, and our driver, and our assistant. And we have Dinny, who is helping us with events. And we also have three um, uh, therapists uh, during the week, and another therapist on the weekend. And we have a, a Dr. Dasana, who is our, our doctor. And what do you see as the next step for Silman? The next step, yes, yes, <laughs> nicely, nicely put. Our next step for Soul Men will be to uh, first of all, we have to get the two houses put up on the land that we've just uh, acquired for the two families, and then we will, in six months' time, replace those houses with RCP houses, which is recycled plastic compound houses, and these are, uh, this is a project which Governor Pastica, who I've renamed uh, possibly in the future Governor No Plastica, because the houses are made from plastic waste, from garbage, which is collected and put together with a compound, and these houses are modular, they're flat packed, they're earthquake proof, they're zero maintenance and non-toxic. And we're going to replace the wooden houses that we're putting on in the next couple of weeks with the, these two houses as a focus. Our next big project is, is we're not going to move away from the individual cases, but we're broadening our scope to go for a thousand people with, for hearing aids and also with mobility needs like arms and legs. And that's a 400 million uh, $400,000 so project, which I'm asking uh, two Rotary Clubs to back. Yeah. How do you actually go about raising money? Well, apart from the concert, which I explained at the Hard Rock, um, 
Um, we really rely on volunteers and donations. And we have all the details on our Facebook and our website, www.soulmen.org. So if anybody can actually go onto our website, look at our wish list, and generously donate, that would be wonderful. And as far as you are concerned, i.e. Robert, um, do you see yourself doing this for the rest of your life? No, it, it's actually... At the moment, it's terribly time-consuming at the cost of my own personal life, which I don't begrudge. But I would like to get... Uh, I'd like... I've become by default the sort of figure himself, and I, I, would, I would probably remain as such, but I would like to try and get more people into the organisation to do a lot of the work that I do, so that I can concentrate on fundraising um, a little bit more. Thank you so much for coming today. We really enjoyed meeting you. And we wish you every success with your fabulous project. Thank you.